That's what it does. Exactly. So now we have to understand this. Sine is applied to what? Yeah. Angles. And you will return what? What is the output? Sine applied to pi over 3. What do I get as the answer? A number between negative 1 and 1. Good. Now sine inverse is applied to a number between negative 1 and 1, and it will give us an output of what? Of an angle. So I need you to understand this one more time. Sine is applied to angles, returns output what? A number between negative 1 and 1. Sine inverse is applied to numbers between negative 1 and 1, and it will return? It will return? What is the output of sine inverse? Okay, let's say it, say it one more time. Sine, it's okay. It needs time. That's why I'm repeating it so many times. So sine is applied to an angle, and the output is a number between negative 1 and 1. The inverse function is applied to a number between negative 1 and 1, and it will give us back an angle. I want you to say that just with me. Okay, one more time. So sine is applied to an angle. It will give us a number between negative 1 and 1. Sine is inverse is applied to a number between negative 1 and 1, and it will give us an output that is an angle. An angle. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So now, I have a couple of questions for you, and here they are. Sine of sine inverse of 1. That's one question. Then I want sine inverse of sine pi over 3. And then I want I want sine inverse of sine 2 pi over 3. Let's discuss this property. What is the property of inverse functions? Let's refresh our memory on chapter 2. So if I apply a function to x, and then I apply the inverse function to the result, what do I get back? Just x. Very good. Okay. What if I apply the inverse function to x, and then I apply the function to x? What will I get? Perfect. So now let's stay with me and let's say this. Sine is the inverse of sine inverse, and sine inverse is the inverse of sine. So when I apply sine to sine inverse of 1, what happens to sine and sine inverse? Right. And the answer is 1. Now I have to make sure of something. Okay. Can I apply sine inverse to 1? Yes, and then this will give me an angle, and then I can apply sine to this angle, and I get 1. So I made sure that all conditions are fulfilled. Okay, next one. Sine inverse of sine of pi over 3. So I want to write what as the answer? Right, but I have to make sure. Okay, sine. Is pi over 3 in here? Yes, so since sine of pi over 3 is where it should be, then sine inverse will be applied to this, what will that be? A number, careful. Sine of pi over 3 is a number. Sine inverse cannot be applied to an angle. Sine inverse is applied to number, and the answer must be pi over 3, which is an angle. Perfect. Now stay with me, because that's, of course, different. I know that sine inverse cancels sine, cancels sine, and sine cancels sine inverse. But writing 2 pi over 3 will be a mistake. 
why writing 2 pi over 3 will be a mistake. Let's come back. Sine has to be applied anywhere between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what does that mean? Negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is this. But 2 pi over 3 is here. 2 times 60 degrees. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees, so that's 60 degrees is 120. But the domain for sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So I cannot write 2 pi over 3. I cannot use the inverse, the, fun the property of inverse functions here. No. I have to, I cannot apply the inverse, the property of inverse functions, but it doesn't mean that the answer doesn't exist. How much is sine 2 pi over 3? So, sine applied to an angle cannot give us an angle. So, if the angle is in degrees or the angle is in a radians, it doesn't matter. The answer must be a number. No. I look at the reference angle as we did last time. Right? So, 2 pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So, it's right here. This is... Um, uh, 120. So this is 180 and 60 degrees. So it's this. So the reference angle is pi over 3. We know three numbers. I asked you to remember three numbers. What is sine of pi over 3? It's not one half. It's the other one. Which one? Right. So from here I will write sine inverse of the square of 3 over 2. And now I'm coming back here. Can I apply sine inverse to the square of 3 over 2? Yes, it's a number between 0 and 1. What will the answer be? Exactly. But we have to be able to understand that when we apply sine to an angle, we don't get an angle but a number. When we apply sine inverse to a number, we get an angle. Okay, let's graph these two functions on the same coordinate system. So let's go to y equals clear. It would be a little bit difficult to show them on the same coordinate system. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to write sine x and uh, sine inverse uh, x. And now I have to go to the viewing window. And I only want to see what happens between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So negative pi divided by 2 and pi over 2. I want, let's say, a scale of pi over 4. And I think we had that, but just making sure. And I want y minimum to be negative 1. I want y maximum to be 1. With a scale of 1, it's OK. And graph. Here comes sine between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's it. It has to be a 1 to 1 function. And here comes its inverse function. And the two graphs have to overlap or be symmetric with respect to what? With respect to which line? Exactly, y equals x. They are reversed, right? The coordinates are reversed. It, so if I put y equals x in there, it has to go right between them. Here's the third one. They have the two graphs have to be symmetric with respect to y equals x as we know from chapter two. Right? When we graph the inverse functions. So this is this is the graph of sine and this is the graph of the inverse. The reason why the graph is uh, cut here is because this is pi over two and this is not pi over two. It's a little bit less than pi over two. That's why. So if I go to the viewing window and I change 
uh, the y maximum to pi over 2. Let's see now. Here's a sign between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Yeah, I forgot to. Go. Yeah, I'm sorry. I also had to change it. Yeah, now this is fine here, but I forgot to change it on the uh, negative side. So now the graphs are completely symmetric. Sorry about that. So I want um, y minimum also negative pi. Okay. Now this because they have to be the same, right? The scale has to be the same. Otherwise. Here it is. The sign, and here is. Um, the inverse function, and of course, y equals x has to go right here in the middle. The, the reason why it's still not perfect perfect is because there are more pixels this way than this way. Even if I have a square viewing window, the viewing window shows more pixels here than here. So it's still not perfect perfect. Is this clear? Okay, moving on to cosine. And then tangent. So y equals cosine x. Let's talk about cosine x. Everything is the same. Phase shift period. Um, uh, what else? Fa uh, amplitude and the interval. All the same. But the graph is different. So let's just graph cosine. It's basically a shifted sign. And you'll see in a minute what happens. So let's start by hand with pi over four, uh, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi, and with positive one and negative one. Of course, we know that, right? Sine maximum is one, minimum is negative one. Ready? Okay. So back to the unit circle. So please tell me at zero radians. Zero radians right here. What is the value of cosine? Uh, one. one. Very good. At pi over two, remember, so a cosine is measured on the x-axis. Indeed. At pi. Two. Perfect. At three pi over two. And finally. Excellent. Now I'm going to come back for a second to the graph of sine that we had. So here's the graph of sine. So if I take this piece and I shift it here, I get this graph. If I take this piece and I shift it here, I get this graph. So this point will go here, this point will go here, this point will go here, and this point will go here. So that's the graph of cosine. Let's play with it a little bit. So let's choose from the same page, 396, because now we have all the information. And we'll talk about the inverse function as well. We'll see. Oh, of course. Uh, so let me let me say that one more thing here. Of course, it goes on forever. So um, is this clear why this function is what type? Odd or even? Mm -hmm. Right. So I can, I can fold the graph here, right, with respect to the y-axis, right? So cosine is an even function. By the way, is this function one-to-one? -one? Is it one-to-one? -one? Uh, no. no. But, but what about this piece? Is this piece one-to-one? -one? So we're going to truncate the domain of cosine in order to invent the inverse function. Zero to pi. Zero to pi, indeed. It would be zero to pi. 
So uh, we'll, we'll choose a function in a minute, but I just want to mention that. So the domain, so cosine is defined on 0 to pi. And please tell me the range of cosine. Very good. We have not seen cosine inverse yet, but we do know it's domain and range. Good. So one more time. Cosine is applied to an angle, and it will give us a number. Cosine inverse is applied to number, and it will give us back an angle. Perfect. Okay, so let's choose a uh, graph, a function on page 396 that is cosine. Which one? Okay. 32. So y equals co uh, 3 cosine in parentheses x plus pi over 4. Only sine and cosine have amplitude, so you can write no other function has amplitude. Note, amplitude is only for sine and cosine. Only. There is no amplitude for tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Okay. So the question uh, is has three, uh, uh, of course, several parts, but I have to present amplitude, have to present phase shift, have to uh, present the period, and the interval, which is still b and b plus p. Can anyone identify the period? Yes, you're right. The period is 2 pi. There is no number that multiplies x. Well, there is. It's 1. Can anyone identify the amplitude for us? Yes, which is the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Which means this function will reach what high point? And what low point? Perfect. OK, what about b? Careful, which direction? Yes. The phase shift has to um, include a sign. Yes. In the past, when we graphed x minus 1 squared, we said 1 to the left. But here we have to say that the phase shift is negative pi over 4. And now, can anyone give us the interval on which the function will be graphed? Yes. Yes. So, which is 7 pi over 4. I would like to graph it by hand first. So we have an idea, and then we'll graph it by hand uh, with the graphing calculator. So look at what I'm doing. I'll say this is negative pi over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 pi over 4 and negative pi over 4. Maximum, 2. Minimum, negative 2. I know the graph, it's like a vase, right? Graph of cosine is, looks like a vase, okay? If there is no negative coefficient in front of it, right? Because then I would it look like this, right? Okay, so, I'm sorry? Oh, of course, of course. I'm sorry. I'm still looking at, okay. So right in the middle, so this is 8, right? 2, 4. Right in the middle. So it will cross. It will have the minimum right here, right in the middle. It will cross at this point and at this point. So it will start right here. It will cross here. Right in the middle has to have the middle point. Then it will cross again here and then come here. One more time, it's like a vase, like this, right? So, in the middle it has the minimum. Of course, this happens because it 
has a positive leading coefficient. Well, not leading coefficient, you know what I mean, a positive number in front of it. Ready? So let's go to y equals. Clear everything we have with sine. And uh, we want to graph 3 cosine. And in parentheses, we have x plus pi over 4. Be careful with the mode, because if you put pi over 4 and you have uh, the, the mode in degrees, you're not going to get anything. OK, so now I adjust the viewing window. I only want to see between negative pi over 4. I didn't mean that. Negative pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4, right? Are you with me? With a scale of pi over 4, is that a yes? Scale of pi over 4. And uh, y minimum, let's go to negative 4 so it doesn't hit the edge of the, of the uh, viewing window to 4. With a scale of 1 is fine and just press enter. Here it is. Right in the middle, having that minimum coming back up to positive 3. Any questions about cosine? So real quick. Yes. Um, what was the math for uh, to find tickets seven pi over four? Pi, negative pi over four plus two pi. Yeah, could you do that out for me? Yes, two pi is the same with uh, eight pi over four. Eight pi over four minus pi over four is seven pi over four. So 2 pi, you can replace it by 8 pi over 4. Because you, you need the same denominator. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Good. So now I would like to... graph both functions. Cosine and the inverse. Go back to y equals, clear everything. I want cosine x, and I want the inverse function, which is sine inverse, I'm sorry, cosine inverse x. Now, this is a little bit tricky with the viewing window. So cosine has to be between 0 and 2, and two pi, correct? Uh, 0 to pi. 0 to pi. And then, in order to, to graph its inverse, let's go back. Let me, let me do this first by hand so we can analyze this together. Okay. So, number 10. Okay. This is the graph of cosine. And now I want to graph the inverse function of cosine. What is this? Indeed, I need it. Good. So now, this point moves here. This point moves here. Well, this point from pi, so this point right here is at pi comma negative 1, has to go at where? So pi negative 1 goes to the other side, right? At pi, at negative pi, negative 1, right here, right? So the graph should be So this is this. So this piece goes here. And this is at pi goes to the other side. So this is at negative pi, sorry. So this is negative, negative pi, negative 1, right? 
uh, sorry, uh, yes, positive, uh, uh, negative pi, positive 1, right here. So, I can never ever get it perfectly. I have to do the calculation. I can never get that other side perfectly. But I just wanted to analyze what we have to I used it as a viewing window. So between negative pi and pi, negative pi and pi, with a scale of pi over 4, that's good. Pi divided by 4, uh, yes, of course, pi divided by 4. And now let's, of course, I messed up the viewing window right here. Okay, so um, y minimum negative one to one. I'm going to use negative two to two. Although let's let's try first negative one to one with a scale of one. That's fine. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Oh, I thought he can. Oh, I was I was just playing by myself. Very nice. Okay, cosine x and cosine inverse. So that goes that point across y. So negative pi. Let's see what did I do here. Come on. Okay. So um, from pi across would be at uh, negative pi and positive one. Yes. So I want. So I have negative pi to positive pi. I have negative one to positive one. The difficulty with the scale of pi over four. The difficulty is the same thing. I cannot really use negative 1 and 1 because it was n it's not going to be symmetric. So negative pi, not that one, this one. Come on. I know, I know. Negative pi to pi to the scale of 1. The only problem I'm having is that I cannot make the graph, I cannot make the calculator to graph just that piece. So I can make the calculator graph just um, cosine inverse, but I cannot make the calculator to stop and sh just show between this and this. You understand what I'm saying? So I also have this byproduct here that shows up. Any questions? Okay, let's look at the last one. Promise this is the last one. Tangent. f of x equals tangent x. And then we can choose other problems. Oh, we can't. It's 645. I'm sorry. Yeah, it takes a lot with the